What's up, y'all? Chris, here to do three quick picks. Um, hopefully, they'll be quick. I always say that never happens as planned. But uh, just going to give three picks on three fights going down on three separate events. Boxing and MMA, I usually don't like to mix my videos up. But for time's sake, that's what's going to happen. I was going to do it in the order I'm going to watch the fights, but I'm going to get the boxing out the way because um, boxing fans don't want to watch the MMA content. They don't have to wait, and MMA fans can just skip the boxing thing real quick. I don't really want to give a, I don't really have any uh, prediction for, I don't, uh, in depth prediction on uh, Ortiz versus uh, Lopez. I expect Ortiz to win that fight, but I am looking forward to the Lucas Matisse versus Humberto Soto fight. I actually think, um, as far as combat sports go, that's my most anticipated fight of the weekend, and I think it has the potential to be the best, most entertaining fight of the weekend. I'm a big fan of Matisse. I think he's one of the more underrated fighters in the sport. He's got two losses. Both are debatable by split decision to Zab Judah and Devin Alexander, particularly the Alexander one. But the thing about those fights is he may have lost. If you think he lost, that's fine. But he definitely closed strong in both those fights. So he could almost be an undefeated guy at this point. He's that close to it. I think he is somewhat like his countryman, Marcos Maidana, a hard hitter, but I think he's a better, more versatile boxer as well. I actually think he's better than Maidana. I don't know if they'll ever fight because they used to train together, I believe. But um, that'd be a hell of a scrap if they had him. But anyways, um, yeah, I think Matisse is going to win this one. Soto, he's on a roll, but his, his opposition has been kind of up and down. Uh, he had the win over and to Leon, of course, but, um, you know, that was more of a war. I don't think he, I think if he gets into a war in this fight, which I think he can very well be, I still favor Matisse. I think he's a little bit stronger. I think he's got more left. Um, Soto's been in a lot of wars, a lot of fights. I don't think he's done by any stretch of the imagination, but I just think that uh, Matisse is a better overall fighter, and I think he's going to prove it here. I anticipate to go all 12 rounds, or 10, I'm not sure what the schedule is, but I believe it's 12, actually, for some trinket belt. But uh, yeah, I look for Matisse to win this fight by decision. Hopefully, um, he'll get a fair decision. You never know. Soto may be the quote-unquote house fighter. Um, but I think that Matisse should do enough to win this fight by unanimous decision. But don't be surprised if it's split. But either way, look forward to this fight. Like I said, it should be the fight of the weekend. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts on that one. Boxing fans. As far as MMA goes, first up, Friday night main event you got on UFC on FX4, I believe it is. Four, I guess. You got Gray Manor taking on Clay Guida. Intriguing fight on paper. Not a whole lot to say about it, in all honesty. Um, I think it will be competitive, but I favor Gray Manor. I really don't see how Clay, Clay, Clay Guida wins this fight. Unless he's been in some decisions, Clay, that have been kind of close. And he's won some decisions that you thought, maybe he shouldn't have won that fight, you know. But um, he's very active in there, and I think sometimes that catches the judge's eye. And plus the fans always root for him, you know. So sometimes that helps sway the judges as well, even though it shouldn't. But as far as the fight goes, um, I expect Gray to be the bully, as he's called early on, just get the better. Clay likes to take his guys down to the ground and just kind of stifle them, smother them, just work them from there. But I don't think he's going to do that to Gray. Gray's bigger, stronger, better wrestler. So I think Gray controls it early. Not going to be a seriously great striker. Well, I don't know. You never know. Sometimes you got two guys that aren't the best strikers. Technically, they'll just throw hands and um, bombs and it'll turn it pretty entertaining. Plus, Clay Greed is usually in entertaining fights. And so is Gray Maynard for the last few bouts of his as well, at least the Frank Edgar fights. So, um, I think Greg gets better on the feet, though. He hits harder. I think he's got a better chin, although I can't say for sure if that's the case or not. But um, it'll be just interesting to see how he responds off his loss to Maynard, or his loss to Frank Edgar. His first real loss, I believe, in MMA, technically. But anyways, yeah, looking forward to that one. But I favor Gray to sweep the first three rounds. Um, Clay will make it close. Probably will be able to close, uh, do better late, because Gray's been known to tire down late, and Clay Greta, I don't think he's ever gets tired. It is a five-round fight, so I favor Clay, or I favor Gray Maynard by unanimous decision, but don't be surprised if the scorecards are all over the place. But either way, Gray Maynard should win this one. All right, and UFC 147 on Saturday night. Unfortunately, Vitor Belfort got hurt. I was really looking forward to that rematch at Vitor versus Vanderlei. Not that I necessarily think it was going to be the most competitive fight, but, I mean, come on. We've just been waiting for that fight for so long, you know, just to see it. And who knows if we even ever get it at this point. Anyways, Rich Franklin coming in to fill this place. Another rematch, Vanderlei versus uh, Rich 2, which first happened, I believe, in 2009. Rich won by decision. It was a competitive close fight, though, but I do think that Rich deserved a decision from what I recall. Um, I may have thought Vanderlei won, but hindsight being 21, I think Rich got the decision deservedly so. Anyways, as far as this one, normally Rich, you know, he comes in on these other placement fights. It is a catchweight. That's for 195. He got that. Um, he does fairly well. Well, 
you know, he has done fairly well in the past. Look at the Chuck Liddell fight. Late notice came in, knocked out Chuck Liddell, ended his career, basically. And who knows, that scenario could happen here. Although, even with the loss, I don't see Vanderlei retiring. That said, um, Rich was preparing for, a fight, preparing for a fight against Kung Lee in a couple weeks anyway, so he should be in shape and ready to go. Disappointed that Kung Lee fight's not happening. I really wanted to see that. Now Kung's taking on Patrick Ote. Don't know if that's as good a matchup for him stylistically, but I'll talk about that on the next video or the whatever, UFC 148 preview. Anyways, back to this fight. Um, I expect another competitive fight. Five rounds this time, though. It'd be interesting to see whose cardio holds up better. Vanderlei would definitely be inspired fighting in front of his home country fans. Hasn't fought in there in a long time, so he's definitely going to have the motivation. Technique-wise, Rich is a little bit better. Um, I guess, in a way, it, it almost comes down to who's got more left in the tank in this fight. You know, I think both guys are clearly on their downside, but who can absorb more? You know, Vanderlei either gets knocked out or always seems to get hurt in his fight. As of late, Rich, a little bit more durable, but he did get knocked out by Vitor with one shot, oh, pretty much. It was kind of like a flash KO. Um, but Vanderlei's definitely got the power of nothing else. This is a tough one to call. You know, I could see it going either way. Um, Rich, he doesn't really have to prepare, have as much trouble to prepare for Vanderlei a second time because he already knows the game plan to beat him. Things don't really change that much with Vanderlei's style from then to there. Vanderlei, on the other hand, he has to try to figure out what to do against Rich Franklin, who he wasn't preparing for. Not that Rich is that much different than Vitor, but it's a little bit more well-rounded on the feet, in my opinion. I think it's going to be a good one. But I, maybe it's just hope. I don't know. And I've never been, I wasn't a Vanderlei fan for the longest time, but... Maybe I just want to see this guy win in front of his home country because I think it would be pretty um, wild stuff. Yeah, I think it would be crazy. Plus, I want to see him fight Vitor again. So I'm going to go with Vanderlei by stoppage. I think maybe he'll be behind, but he'll be able to catch Rich and hurt him somewhere around third, fourth round and finish him off. If he hurts him, I think he'll be able to finish him off. So I'll go with Vanderlei by stoppage. But if Rich wins by decision, I would not be surprised in any way. Anyways, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on these fights. Um, oh, and about the UFC pay-per-view. Are you guys even going to order it? Um, I know everyone says it's a pretty bad pay-per-view on paper, and for the most part it is. No disrespect, but I don't have Fuel TV. I didn't watch Ultimate Fighter Brazil, um, so I don't really know nothing about the undercard. So, I mean, I'm going to watch it. Go to the sports bar and watch it for free, but uh, are you guys going to watch it? Do you have any interest in the main event at all? Thoughts on the fights? Any of the fights mentioned? Matisse Soto, if you're a boxing fan. Guida Maynard, and of course, Silva Franklin, too. That's it for now. Probably back to a post-fight video on at least the MMA on Saturday night. I won't be able to watch the boxing until later that night. And I don't think I'm going to do a video afterwards because it's going to be late. But, um, yeah. Links to Science of Science radio, no, links to Science of Science website, Facebook, and my Twitter on the information part of the video as always. Till next time, I'm out.